Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always is... Matthew Duck Factory Us. Indeed. Indeed. Mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, first off, Matt, I just wanted to talk about something that's been concerning me in the world. Oh, yeah? Before we get into the topic of today's show. Um, so, there's a bunch of videos that I keep seeing on uh, Facebook with white women making weird things in Waffle Makers. Okay. Yeah. Bunch of things other than waffles. And it's really concerning me. <laughs> Is it like a... a, a thing like they're doing on purpose is like a fad or like a they they mean thing or they think it's better to cook weird things in waffle makers um yeah like ramen okay yeah like the ramen noodles in a waffle maker which seems dangerous to me it also seems like they're just doing it to get views And yeah. that they don't actually think that it actually is better, but they're just like, oh, people will watch me do stupid shit, so I'm going to make a video of me doing stupid shit, and then hopefully people will watch it, and I can get some, like, ad revenue for it. That's what it seems like more it so. Do, it does like, seem like it to me, like, because it just seems like they're making a lot of things more difficult than they should be. I mean, I'll, I've made things in Waffle Makers that you shouldn't, like, I, I'll buy, like, those, uh, those cinnamon, those, like, Pillsbury cinnamon rolls. Yeah, you put those in the waffle maker, and you can make them that way, and they're they're <clears throat> they're delicious. And then you well, put, that makes sense because yeah. you're making something that you know is already like a breakfast type food. You know, like a waffle. Like you know, for example, it's like that's you're doing that, but like I'm gonna make um, spaghettios in the waffle maker. And so that the SpaghettiOs are shaped in, like, a, a waffle, or it's like, what? Like, okay, or I'm going to put meatloaf in the waffle maker so it's in the shape of a waffle. <laughs> I'm going to put that on Instagram or YouTube or... I, I hate social media, sorry. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, like, it's, like, really weird. And, like, 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 the latest one I saw was cupcakes. And this wasn't, like... They made the cupcakes in the waffle maker, which I guess would kind of make sense, like, from scratch or whatever. It's like they bought some, like, cupcakes at Walmart or somewhere. And then put them in the waffle maker, like, you know, filled up the waffle maker with a bunch of cupcakes. Frosting and all. (laughs) And then crushed them down. And it just looked like a disgusting mess of clump of... Wow. Junk. So, yeah, it, it's just really concerning me because I'm kind of just worried about these women. Like, I think there's something wrong with them. And well, I, 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 I really do think that this is the most concerning issue in the world today. I don't think anything well, else matters besides the fact that we need to stop these crazy young white women from making things in waffle makers. I don't know about that. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> But, but yeah, it is concerning. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, today on the show we are covering the short-lived uh, television series, The Duck Factory. We are going to cover the pilot episode, um, which was called Goodbye Buddy, oh, hey. Goodbye Buddy, Hello Skip. <clears throat> Yeah, and the Duck wow. Factory was a one-season television show that aired on NBC in 
1984. Yes. Um, it was the first Hollywood starring role for a very young Jim Carrey. <laughs> this was prior to In Living Color and, you know, obviously Ace Ventura and all the other great things he did back in the 90s. Um, the show also starred Julie Payne, Nancy Lane, Jay um, Tarsus, Clarence uh, Gilliard Jr., Don Messick in his only live action role. Um, Don Messick, if you don't know, was is most famous for being the voice of Scooby Doo mm-hmm. for years. You know, the original voice of Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Jack Guilford was in it. A um, bunch of people. Um, anyways, uh, Teresa Genzel. The basic concept of the of the sitcom is the comic adventures of the employees of a um, hard luck animation company. So like a like a smaller kind of like low budget television animation company. Uh, it was created by Alan Burns and Herbert Klein. Um, both of whom had had previous work as working in animation themselves. Uh, Alan um, Alan Burns had um, started his career as a writer animator for the Rocky and Bullwinkle show in George of the Jungle before uh, turning to live action and uh, co-creating the Mary Tyler Moore show. And Klein had worked in various production companies on uh, capacities, that is, at, on Mr. Magoo and Gerald McBoing Boing, hmm. which is, in my opinion, the greatest name ever. Uh-huh. I do believe I'm going to change my name, Matt, to Gerald McBoing Boing. <laughs> do you think at 43 years old it's too late to change my name? I don't think there's any limita- age limitation to legally change your name. Oh, okay. Do you think I can convince people to start calling me Gerald McBoing Boing? I mean, it might take some time, but, uh, you know, a few people might call you that. I don't know how many, but. Yeah. And, and they can't. Say just, about 30%. Yeah, and they can't call me just Gerald. No. It's got to be Gerald McBoing Boing. Yeah, of course. Yes. I mean, it's obvious. Uh, or just Mick Boing Boing. <clears throat> okay. You can just refer to me as Mr. Mick Boing Boing. <clears throat> I think I'll just stick with Mike. Okay, anyways. Yeah, um, yeah it's, I've gotten used to it. Um, <laughs> so, what happens in this episode here, Matt? Uh, <coughs> well, uh, Skip, you know, Jim Carrey's character. He's uh he's riding a bus, you know, to LA. He's like, you know, wide eyed, you know, type of thing, you know, he's like seeing the city for the first time or whatever, and he's really excited to go to the duck factory. By the way, so I didn't even know what the show was about when you talked about it. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to look it up. I wanna just watch it. So I was seriously wondering if he was going to work at, like, a duck processing factory. (laughs) Where you sit there, like, you know, like, like preparing ducks for people to eat. I'm like, oh, God, that's a pretty rough job to be getting in, you know, L.A. But no, (laughs) it it was much more fun than that, um, thankfully. (laughs) Because I was like, oh, man, that's a pretty, it's going to be one hell of a show right there. I want to see that (laughs) sitcom. Um, yeah, I want to see that one too. <laughs> that, they should reboot it. It's called the Duck Factory, but it's totally changed the premise of the show. <laughs> but um, so he he shows up to go to the you know the office or whatever, and he knocks on the door and no one answers for a minute, and then someone finally starts coming out, and they're saying, "Oh, you know, sorry, we're we're you know close today or whatever," and then he's like, "Oh, can I talk to?" You know, can I talk to Buddy? Because it's like they start, all these guys are walking down with a casket around the other side of the building. And then she's like, uh, I don't think they'll open it up again just for you. Yeah. And so it's like, he's like, oh God, like I came here for like a job interview because 
buddy asked me to to come here to show him some of my cartoons, you know, because this is before the age of the internet, where apparently you couldn't just send an email. You had to travel from Minnesota to Los Angeles just to so, show someone your pictures that you draw. But um, and then so that was kind of like sort of setting up the problem of the show is like you know he traveled all the way out here, you know, to meet this guy you know, to potentially get a job, and then the guy dies. Uh, and uh, so he's kind of, you know, he's like, he's new to town. He doesn't really know what's going on. So the, the woman forgot her name. Uh, I don't know if she introduced herself yet, but um, she invites him to go to the funeral, basically. Yeah. And he's like, you know, pretty much becoming part of this group without even really knowing these people. <laughs> yeah, he, he ends up becoming a pallbearer. Yeah. A- accidentally, because uh, um, Jack Guilford's character, Brooks Carmichael, can't lift the casket, so he helps, he, he offers to help, and then Brooks yeah. just leaves and makes him one of the- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he just leaves and is like, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of funny. Um, they get at, at, They're at the funeral, and they realize that um, the widow... Um, Mrs. Uh, Winkler, um, she uh, she didn't set up a, a, a minister or anybody to talk at the funeral. <laughs> so they're all just sitting there waiting for the, you know, priest or minister or rabbi or whatever to start talking and nobody's there. And um, <laughs> the, uh, the um, they uh, so, so, so they all start just standing up and talking about him and everything and then they they make us skip talk about him too at the funeral. Yeah, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Winkler just seems like a very naive, you know, the the typical stereotypical '80s dumb blonde sort of thing, you know. Yeah, like a ditzy. Yeah, you know, just kind of talks in sort of high tone or high pitch, you know, yeah. type of. You know, we, we saw a lot of that in like '80s. Well, you know, quite sexist, you know, kind of uh, yeah. depictions of blonde, especially especially blonde women, which I never understood. You know, I, I, like I like to know where stereotypes come from. Yeah, like I, I still haven't found where that even like, originates. Like, I have no idea of like the dumb blonde thing. Even yeah, like came when, from. when I was a kid, it was all dumb blondes and dumb Poli- <laughs> dumb Polish yeah. Polish people. Yeah, and me too. Dumb I, Polish. I never yeah. understood either one of those things because I know a lot of very smart. Um, blonde and Polish people, and people that are both blonde and Polish, and yeah. um, <laughs> so yeah, it's I like I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, it's, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, she's she's like you know super young and stuff like that. And, you know, we find out that they were only married for three weeks. Or <laughs> yeah, like or she actually even only knew him for like three weeks. Oh, so, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Knew him for, yeah. <laughs> and, she, and we find out she was uh, she was an ice skater in Vegas. Um, a topless ice skater. <laughs> That's how they met. <laughs> dangerous. Yes. <laughs> I know all the times I've topless ice skated, that was dangerous. Like that. That's like that, that's like a lot of courage on her part to to be on the ice topless because she falls over. Man, that's that's gonna hurt a yeah. lot. Uh, <laughs> and I know it did every time I did. <laughs> Back when I was a topless ice skater. Well, I think it would hurt worse for her because of her breasts, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Actually I was a bottom I was a bottomless ice skater. That's what I'm saying it would be a equivalent of falling <laughs> on ice. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like that's what it would feel like. It's like that's bad. Uh, <laughs> Bottomless ice skating with Mike. Oh god, <laughs> yeah, but I'm fully clothed with top. I got a sh- t-shirt on. Yeah, I wore I, I wore a I wore a tuxedo suit on top and no not, pants. Not naked. I, I'm covered from the top. <laughs> I even got a ski cap on and everything. Yep. But uh, <laughs> not not wearing a condom though. We're wearing a mask. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, good times. Good times. <laughs> Yeah, that job only lasted a little while. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh huh. So um, that was back in my twenties um, <laughs> when I lived in Vegas. Yeah. 
Yes. You never lived in Vegas. <laughs> no, I've never even been to Vegas. No. <laughs> so, um, the uh, so so the uh, what else happens here in this <laughs> television? <series? laughs> it's a weird episode. I tell you that much. Uh, so they make him speak at the funeral. He's like, I never, I never even met him, and then like the. The, like, the business manager who I also implied that she, they were having she was having an affair with uh, with Buddy yeah. through most of their lives together. She's like, "Well, you do him enough to be a pallbearer, so say something." <laughs> so he goes up and just I don't know says a little something, and uh, then you know they leave. They go back to the you know the office or whatever, try to figure out you know what else. No, actually, they went back to the the mansion or wherever they live, you know, where he lived at with, uh, with his wife, his yeah. wife of weeks or whatever. And, uh, for like, you know, like a, uh, like a memorial type thing. And, um, she starts talking to, uh, Skip and, uh, cause you know, she feels kind of comfortable with him because they both don't really know him that well. <laughs> I mean, buddy that well. Yeah. And that's when she told him that, you know, he met her while, you know, she was topless skater on ice in Vegas, and you know she says that he could he could stay there, but then uh, the the manager overheard that and thought that Skip was trying to like, you know, ease his way into like getting a job or whatever type of thing. And he's like, "If you want a job, you go through me or whatever." He's like, "Oh, like you can really get me a job?" And she's like, "Yeah, don't get excited. It's an entry level position or whatever." Um, yeah. So instead of staying at the mansion, which would have been a lot cooler, um, which she offered him, so technically it's her mansion, but whatever, um, he ends up staying like at the office itself in a, uh, a a room where Buddy quote took naps, which is a euphemism for not taking naps. Um, it's for and, uh, having sex. Yeah, that's what happened, I'm pretty sure, because she talked about how we used to stay and work at midnight, and sometimes we worked all night long. It's like, oh, okay. And uh, it's like, no, you're doing. Um, it's got like a water bed, like just some weird 80 shit or 70 shit, rather. Yeah, very very uh, <clears throat> sleazeball, sex, yeah. sex den sort of thing. Yeah, uh, we just like lava lamps, I think, and shit like that. So. Uh, that's like you know that's his home now. I know? mean, it looks just like, it looks just like my bedroom does now, but you know. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. You got the round water bed, you know, like a circle type of thing, yeah. and yeah, you, know, you got the the mirror you know, the on the ceiling. Lamp. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, <laughs> you know that he could do this. You know, get a projector screen, do like the Pink Floyd space thing or whatever. Yeah, or or like they, or like they say in the thing, he used to like shave in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> what the hell? I know. Uh, it's like it's weird. Uh, it's, yeah. And, uh, so that's his home now. I mean, you know, it's not too bad. I mean, he shows up, and then within a day or like within a few hours, he's got a job and a place to stay. Yeah. I mean, that's you know, that's that's a pretty and it does not usually happen that quickly for, you know, unless you have already got set up if you just show yeah. up in this city. Uh, or, and, uh, or, or if, if you I, know somebody in Vegas who can get you a job as a bottomless, uh, uh, a I, bottomless skater, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. a bottomless ice skater. Yep. <clears throat> I wonder, like, when rollerblades became the thing of that became a, uh, like, they went into that instead of ice skating. Like, oh well. Yeah, I used to I, I, I used to roll a rollerblade uh, bottomless on the Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles all the time, and um, <laughs> wait. Wait, what? Am, no, I, am I imagining all this? I'm kidding. I think you are. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I don't think any of these things happen. But, um, no. So he finds out that um, <clears throat> that the budget's really low because he came up with these um, really cool ideas to do with the cartoon. And then, the you know, the guys, you know, he really loves it and stuff. And then he's like, you know. They'll never let us do it because you know it costs more money to do all these extra animations, and that's when he finds out that like, oh shoot, like I'm kind of working for a company now that's not really 
you know, doing too well, but he's kind of like, you know, one of these like super hopeful people or whatever. Like everyone else wants to just give up, find new jobs, you know, elsewhere or whatever. Yeah, do you want to take a quick break here, Matt, and then we'll talk about the rest of the episode? Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there So like I was saying, Matt, um, I, uh, you know, wore the skate on my penis and, um, oh wait, okay, we're back folks. And, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. So the, um, that one, that one like took me aback there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, what else happens in this episode of the duck factory here, Matt? Uh, well, certainly not that, um, <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, he's like this really hopeful dude, you know, like, you know, he does like the whole inspiring speech thing, you know, like, no, we gotta stick together or whatever type of thing. Uh, and like, you know, the, the one, the business manager, I keep forgetting her name, but she's like the one that pretty much runs the ship. Um, I think it's Aggie. It's right. Aggie. She's like, uh, she was trying to get into like some kind of new technology, I guess, to make it a little bit cheaper um, to make the cartoons. But then uh, that would then also mean that some people would get fired. So like they kind of went back and forth like with that, I think. And then eventually they got to the point where it was like, you know, no, we're all going to keep our jobs. But we're all going to basically make this, you know, work somehow. Um, yeah. That was basically, yeah, I think, the, near the end of the episode. Basically about all that happens in the episode. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, you've got the, you know, it, they basically, she had to talk to the network and basically take a reduced uh, price for the show so it could stay on the air. Um, and uh, at one point, uh, a couple of the guys working there, one of a couple of the writers were about to uh, quit and... But then they basically were told by by Skip that they, you know, where else are they going to find a job? Because it's it's hard to find a job in, you know, animation. Right. Which is true, because, you know, that's what I wanted to do before I did the bottomless ice skating. <laughs> I was trying to do, do a bottomless animation. And um, bottomless. <laughs> Nobody got wow. my, nobody got my, you know, I, I was ahead of my time. Um, no one got your humor. No, at the time. they didn't really understand. You know, <clears throat> I got sued for sexual harassment and things. I don't understand what that was about, but, um, <laughs> oh, it's probably from all the bottomless skating or, or animating. Or yeah. Yeah. I could only draw really well when I was bottomless. <laughs> it's just yeah. a really weird but, thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's true. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. Uh, you, you you don't believe me, do you, Matt? 
No. <laughs> well, okay. No. I don't know if I believe myself either. But anyways, um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, um, I forgot to ask at the beginning here, Matt. Um, I'll ask you now because uh, we're at the end here. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what did you think of this episode? <clears throat> you know, it was okay. Um, it, it had a, a very um, '80s, you know, feel to it, like that kind of humor, at least that kind of like um, what do I call it? Dark humor, but just kind of a. Uh, like, I guess sort of edgy, but not well, edgy for its time, I guess. Um, you know, like the whole thing about, like, oh, I don't know if they'll open it up for you, you know, the casket, stuff like that. That was yeah. kind of that kind of humor, you know. Um, you know, I, I, it wasn't my favorite show, but, you know, I kind of liked it. You know, I think I thought, found interesting, like, you know, style wise, is the fact that it was, uh, it seemed like a single camera sort of operation as opposed to the three camera operation that was prevalent at that time. Um, if to know the difference, like you know, on most sitcoms at the time were sh- shot in front of a studio audience with three cameras. This wasn't. I could tell. You know, they, it looks like they added a laugh track afterwards. But oh, wow. yeah, but it wasn't shot in front of an audience like um, like mm-hmm. shows like you know of the eighties. You know, like your full houses and all those things were shot. You know, like in front of a studio audience. You know, right. Um. The show did um, air after Cheers on, th- oh. on Thursday nights, which is interesting. <clears throat> <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Like I said before, it lasted 13 episodes. Um, it, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I really liked it. I remember watching this as a kid or like a teenager or something on um, Comedy Central. Oh, wow. They, they, they used to re-air this on Comedy Central a lot. Um in the early days of Comedy Central before they started, you know, making them their own content and stuff. So, because they used to... There are a lot of uh, weird reruns of shows that didn't last too long because they were probably cheaper for them to get. Oh, yeah. So it was like this and, like, the Bad News Bears television series and... Um, right, yeah. You know, things of that nature, like, you know, that you didn't really see much. Um, yeah, that's a show we might want to cover for a future episode. Um, the, uh... Um, yeah, it's just interesting. Um, interesting, a lot of a lot of interesting shows that I never would have seen before, but they were just all on Comedy Central at that time. Back when I was obsessed with just watching television all the time, unlike now where I'm just obsessed with watching things on streaming. Um, wait, yeah. <laughs> or, or the Mask Singer? Yes. Uh, yes. You know, fuck the Mask Singer. I love that show, but they they keep getting rid of the good acts. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You, you don't plan to watch it, do you, Matthew? I don't know. Probably not. Okay, so I'm going to uh, spoil things here, folks, so don't listen to oh, this. Yeah. But, you know, they got rid of Hanson. What? Yeah. <clears throat> the best <throat> the best harmonies <throat> in the fucking business, people. And they, and, they, and they voted off Hanson. Like, what the fuck? <clears throat> I'm going to kill them. Yes. That was yes. a, that was a, that was a couple weeks ago or so, and then they they voted off other people that I was just like, why the and the people that are left? I still like them, but I'm just like, come on, Hanson were the best. Uh, it's a conspiracy. Yes. Either that, or I think that you know, I think a lot of it's staged, and they want people to leave at certain times for reasons <laughs> that have nothing to do with actual votes, because I don't think that the votes are actually legit. So, um. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, it looks like they got they got bopped off the stage, you know, which is really bad. Um, yeah, they got stuck in the middle of nowhere, and um, yeah. <laughs> which was the name of their first album. Anyways, um, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, any other thoughts on this uh, epi- on this uh, show, Matt? Before we uh, take another break, and then we'll come back with some uh, with some. Uh, Trivia and uh, reviews. No, I think that's. I think we could do that. Okay. All right. Um, I know it's a quick break here, folks. Uh, we'll we'll be right back. Um, after these messages, we'll be right back. It's the ninja from the ass, angry 
Ninja yeah. Show saying, come listen to the show. We got the Ninja Wife to give you your movie reviews. We got the conscript to give you the Ninja News. And we got the battle to talk about your sports. And as always, it is the Ask the Angry Ninja Show. So ask me a question. We'll give you the ninja knowledge you need for your ninja life. Search for us anywhere you get your podcast from. Just search for the Ask the Angry Ninja Show and enjoy the show. Okay, so then when I was drawing that one thing, I, um, you know, I was telling you about that duck that I was drawing. I, uh, mm-hmm. I dropped to the ground, and everybody was like, "Oh, we can see your butthole." And uh, wait, I'm sorry. Anyway, so, um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait a second, what's wrong with me? I think you're having a lot of false memories here. Yeah, um, yeah, but you know, really, I wasn't. I was. I was a. T- I was a bottomless animator and a and a bottomless uh, ice skater. I just don't think there's a thing. Um, Are you sure? Well, it was better. It was better than that time I tried to be a bottomless fry cook. Oh yeah, yeah. um, I don't think that turned out well. Um, No, it didn't turn out medium rare either. Anyways, um, so the uh, (laughs) the um, back to the show. Um, so uh. I need help. Um, so, okay. so basically, this was uh, Jim Carrey's first um, starring role in Hollywood. And like I said, the only other real trivia is the fact that this aired after Cheers, like I've said before. So pretty much there's no real major trivia here. Um, right. So, um, do you want me to read a, a, a review here, Matt? Uh, yes, sure. Okay. Okay, here's uh, one from 2002, on December 30th, from Canonet. 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 Mm. I saw it, too. <laughs> I remember seeing The Duck Factory on NBC as a teenager. Um, I had an interest in uh, voice work and animation, plus uh, curious to see what Don Messick looked like. Uh, the show was okay, from what I remember, but felt NBC did not really give it a chance. Typical of shows that are actually good, but the almighty dollar and ratings rule, so it was cut. <laughs> um, here's a uh, another one. Underrated comedy from MTM. That's Mary Tyler Moore Productions. Um, mm-hmm. This is from Gary109 in July 16th of 2001. Um, mm-hmm. This little gem of a comedy... The title refers to a cartoon, cartoon studio where the main character is a duck. That's the other thing. The main character of the show is Dippy Duck. Yeah. That <laughs> we didn't really get into. Um, didn't get its due. It stars Jim Carrey in his uh, pre-crazy period, as well as the uh, wonderful Jack Guilford. Um, the entire cast is a delight in this show that really deserves a stay of execution. It really deserved, not deserves. Um, I'm glad that uh, IMDb says... It's out on video, but I've never seen it anywhere. I'll um, guess I'll keep looking. Yeah, that's the other thing. The show is only the first three and the last three episodes are out on VHS. Uh-uh. That's all you can, you know, find anywhere. Um, except for, I believe, the whole show is actually on YouTube for free. <laughs> so now, yeah, yeah now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, here's another one. Uh, a, Seven out of ten. Um, I liked it despite Jim Carrey. Eh. Um, this is from Ferns, Fernser, and this is March twenty uh, sixth of twenty eight. Um, twenty oh eight. That is. Um, at the time, mm-hmm. I didn't realize he was the star. I liked it a lot, but uh, thought it was an ensemble comedy with uh, Jack Guilford and the. Um, Girl is the main characters with uh, Carrie in the loudmouth uh, sidekick part. I was always waiting for him to shut up, and then the others uh, could get back to the story. I've never been able to watch his other roles. He always seems so hammy and yet full of himself. Seems like they had a lot of familiar faces, like Larry Gelman. Uh, <clears throat> The dentist on the Newhart show. 
I never <laughs> realized it was on tape. Now that I know it's available, I bought the two reels for ten dollars. I'll be able to uh, see it. Really was as promising as I remember it. Yeah. See if it was. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, um, overall, I like I said, I really liked this show. I I remember watching it as a kid, and I think it did deserve a little bit. You know, I mean, it, it was. Basically, uh, it was a product of its time. It wasn't like, you know, the greatest show ever, but it was it was really funny. And you could see the potential in Jim Carrey in this in this show, you know. Um, But yeah, but it was like they said before his crazy days, you know, before he got all, you know, fire marshal bill on us and everything, you know. (laughs) So, yeah, I don't know. Any other thoughts on this here, Matt? No, I think it's about it. Yeah, I mean it was. This is a short episode that we have here, folks. But you know, it, <laughs> it was. It's hard to really talk about a show that we enjoyed. You know. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. Um, I. Uh, I mean, I kind of want to go back now and watch the rest of the episodes that are on YouTube, which I probably will end up doing eventually. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I saw three of them on. I mean, I didn't watch, but I saw that there were three of them on YouTube. At least. Yeah, there's uh, at least there's at least three episodes on there, um, which you know, I recommend checking out. You know, um, Jack Guilford is is amazing. He's he's the uh, older uh, animator on the show, and he was he's a very underrated um, actor. He's he's a comic genius in my opinion. His timing is just on point all the time. Um, it, it's worth watching just for him. And also being able to see what Scooby Doo looked like in person with Don Messick, you know, <laughs> you know, did a lot of lot of great voices. He he's one of the greatest uh, voice artists of all voiceover artists of all time, um, which yeah. I'm I'm obsessed with voiceover artists, so I was happy to see him in something. But yeah, rest in peace, both of those guys. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah. Anything else on your mind here, Matt, before we go? <clears throat> Just, uh, no, I can't think of anything <laughs> clever. Yeah, well, <clears throat> you know, get get your vaccines, people. You know, but when you go to get them, make sure you're wearing bottoms. Yeah. They don't need to stick you down there. They stick you in the arm. Just letting you know. Nope. Yep. And um, also just wanted to, uh, you know, say be sure to go to our uh, Patreon, you know, check that out. Um, you can help support the show that way. Share us on um, social media anywhere you can. You know, I I'd really appreciate that. You know, the more listens we get, the more people will, you know, be able to find the show. The more reviews we get on um, on Apple podcasts would be great, too, because that'll help people find the show. Um, it sounds like something simple and stupid but it does help a lot um and i know everybody asks you to do that but it, it literally takes like you know less than a minute to leave a review on apple and that's probably yeah. one of the best ways you can do that make sure you uh check out any of our sponsors um that helps out too um you know you know wh- whether they're things you know that w- one of the one of the things that's been sponsoring our show lately is manscaped and that helps when you're you know especially when you're a bottomless uh, ice you know answer um uh yeah (laughs) it does help out you know so um yep just thought of that um anyway so (laughs) um until next time folks um wear a mask wear a condom (laughs) be good to each other and be kind and rewind (laughs) Bye bye Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.